so the the inmates do they when they fight fire do they get all the same gear and the same training because i would like i would think somebody who's got like uh looking for you know the devil's advocate of, are they just thrown out there and say good luck or how does that work with inmates no so they they get the same training i believe is an f2 uh which is a seasonal firefighter and so they have um they go through training um you know they definitely don't have the same level of gear mm -hmm. but they have gear and the thing about these folks if you talk to a lot of firefighters um a lot of these inmate firefighters are do they're busting their ass. Mm -hmm. They're doing some of the hardest work on a fire line. They're cutting hand hand line, um, and they're hiking into some of the shittiest, most remote, grueling country, and you don't see them complaining. Yeah, they sit there and they so they are the sled explain, dogs. Yeah, explain cutting a hand line because I don't think people a lot of people probably don't know what yeah. that is. Yeah, so you know the big thing about big wild wildland fires is you can't put them out. It's just, they're out of control. And that's not something that you can do. What you do is you contain it. Mm -hmm. You try and basically get ahead of this fire, predict its direction and create a big enough break to where you can contain it to an area and you let it burn out in that area. Um, they can use, you know, fire retardant drops, water drops, but a big thing they do is they cut hand line and it can be, you can cut line with a dozer if the terrain allows it. Um, but a lot of these remote areas, a lot of these remote fires have to be cut with hand tools. So basically they use a, a McLeod as a common tool. Looks like a big hoe that you would hoe your garden with. Mm -hmm. um, it has a sort of a, a, a rakey looking side and then it's got a huge blade on the one side. And basically the idea is to, the idea is you have to create a break that is, what is it, one and a half times the fuel height aligned mm. back. And you're trying to go down to raw material. So you're trying to go down to, to dirt. Mm -hmm. And you're basically cutting a, looks like a road mm -hmm. between that fire and the new fuel. Um, the other so thing, if it's a 40 foot tree right there, you have to cut a 60 foot line. Yeah, is yeah, that 60 feet back. And then you'll, <clears throat> you'll be running that, you know, as much of the whole perimeter as you can, basically. And they use Polanskis and, and yeah, Polanskis, McLeods, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll have other sort it's of like hard, hard it, manual labor. It's serious manual Hot labor. Hot as fuck, dirty. You're plus you're wearing all the gear. That's got to be hot. Yeah, that Nomex is super hot. I mean, you know, you're you're carrying your pack. A lot of these folks are carrying saws. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, you're you're hiking your ass off, and you know I've 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 been I've been in the outdoors and and hunted and hiked around with you know my redneck buddies who who still wear you know like logging boots in the right. backcountry with a three inch Corks, heel, yeah, and uh, and I'm always in there going like, man, those things weigh five pounds each, yeah, and th those are the boots they're wearing, yeah, you know they're they're hiking in those things and eating these terrible little to go meals that they're warming up on you know, fire engine blocks and exhaust pipes and trying to get yeah. their shitty burrito warm. And there's nothing, nothing glamorous about it. It's, it's serious, serious, hard manual labor. And, you know, a lot of times what they do is the, the inmates will be also assigned to clean up at the end. So they'll, they'll be out there on the fire mm. and then they'll have to go and do cleanup, mop up. And so, you know, if they, That's if probably they, because the, the crew gets sent somewhere else, mm -hmm. but the inmates are, must be based fairly close to there, I would guess. Yeah. So they, they're the ones, yeah, tasked with the crew. Which is, which is not a fun job either, uh, right? Because you're going through this, there's little, you know, hot spots that they have to put out, you know, in the middle of the fire. And, you know, if they run a, if they run a hose lay, fucking mile and a half long mm -hmm. of fire hose, they, they're picking all of that up and hauling it all back. That hose is heavy too. It is no joke. What mm -hmm. these what these people do is um, is intense, you know. And it's not it's not, not for like even aside from the inmates, it's not for money. No. Like the firefighters aren't. It's not like anybody's getting rich off this shit. Not at all, you know. I think and th and that's a big issue that is kind of going on right now. I know um, uh, there's a, an organization called the Grassroots uh, Wildland Fire Federation, I believe, or something like that, and and uh, a lot of these organizations, a lot of these uh, 
like hot shots and you know wildland firefighters right now are trying to advocate for for higher pay because you know if you read stories all these people and there's guys who you know do this job for 25 years and they're away from their family for months at a time, mm -hmm. you know, and work an entire fire season and they might make, you know, 20 grand. And there's a lot that they sacrifice again, you know, mentally, um, you know, PTSD is a big issue in this community. Um, you know, the, the, the rate of, of divorce is extremely high. The rate of cancer that they get is like 70% higher than the mm -hmm. average person. Like, they're exposed to a lot of things. And, you know, I think, uh, I think just as, as we need to do better helping our veterans, we need to do it better helping these folks as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a, to me, it's the same category too, because in the military, they're not doing it for the money either. You know, the, most of these soldiers aren't making hardly anything. No. They're doing it because they're serving the country. Mm -hmm. The, uh, if I was, if I was looking at, you know, objectively, I think military is doing a better job once the, our soldiers get out of evaluating maybe long-term, you know, whether it's who, who knows, disabilities, mm -hmm. but I wonder if that's probably not happening with the firefighters. No. And I, th and I think with the military, I think it's even, that's even a, a newer thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like we're starting to get better at that, you know? And I think, um, I think for years, you know, they were really struggling to deal with that, which is why, you know, folks come back and we see uh, a lot of these men and women become homeless and um, have have drug issues and, and you know, a lot of problems because they weren't being taken care of. Thankfully, mm -hmm. I think people are starting to to realize that and shed light on that and, and go, look, these people gave everything. They sacrificed everything for you, mm -hmm. for your family, and, they, and you need to do better. Yeah, once they do their four years, eight years, however many years, even if it's 20 years, they're still not that old. You know, mm -hmm. if you go in when you're 20, 20 years, you're 40. I mean, there's a lot of life left that you're dealing with whatever happened yeah. as you serve. So yeah, I mean, we, we owe it to them to do better. And I'm glad, I know it's going better, um, but it's been a process. I would think that, you know, the wildland firefighters deserve the same type of consideration yeah. because as you said, it's, it's not for the money. It's, it's serving a greater purpose and there's a lot of risk associated. It's hard work too. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all of those things. It's, there's a, just like the military, there's a lot of, a tremendous amount of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's for, uh, it's for everyone. It's, these people are serving, you know, they're serving our country. Mm -hmm.